Hello, I'm Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life. And today I've got Gavin Longhurst from Big World. Now, what is Big World? Big World is a game engine development company. We make an online game engine, an MMO game engine called Big World. We've been around about uh, 10 years, and uh, we've got a bunch of games coming out now. Um, uh, we've got uh, offices all over the world. We do a lot of work with game developers all over making online game titles. Mm -hmm. So how did you personally end up at Big World? Well, I've known the founders for uh, quite a long time. Um, the Australian game development scene, uh, the company's Australian based, is uh, is reasonably sized, but it's it's not huge. So you can't get uh, you can't get too far without running into some people again and again. Yeah. And uh, I've known these guys for about 15 years or so. And uh, and yeah, when the opportunity came up, I, I went for it, and it was a uh, it was it was a good move. Yeah. So I know that um, like one one game that we've dealt with, which is like World of Tanks. Um, <clears throat> now I I know that that's using Big World yep. uh, as an engine. Now you said though it's been around for ten years. Yes. So um, how come how come I haven't seen it in any other games until now? Until very recently. Well, um, we've been in development of Big World Engine for about four or five years before we started licensing. Mm -hmm. So we were licensing you know 2004 2005. Um, and we've licensed in China a great deal. Uh, not, a, not a lot of those games have come out of China to the West. Some have uh, through publishers like Area Games, uh, titles like Kingdom Heroes, uh, which were early titles done in places like Taiwan by a company called UserJoy, have come over. Um, but most titles are running quite happily in Eastern markets and haven't made it to the West yet. So World of Tanks for us is really a uh, is really kind of a breakout, mm -hmm. Western focused. They're, they're uh, global, yeah. though, aren't they? They're extremely global. Yeah. They've got Chinese operations with a company called Kongjong. Um, they've got uh, they're, they're doing their own distribution in, in the US and in Europe, and they're, they're kicking the ball pretty hard. Right? They're going really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very happy for them. Yeah. Uh, so you know, like they uh, broke, they got against book world records. According to their PR, they got a Guinness Book of World Records. It's uh, it's a very large number. I think uh, the number I saw, so what is it? It's the early part of May. The number I saw last weekend was something like 155,000 wow. concurrent players in one server environment, and that was just for Russian players. That wasn't even right. uh, European or the US. I know the so. official record is like 91,000 or, or yeah. something like yeah. that. But yeah, yeah, they just it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they'll hit a wall at some point, but it's a uh, it's it's a pretty impressive number. I think the you know other single um, single server space games have only managed maybe half as much. So yeah. And what is a single server? Well, it's a single server environment. So uh, a big world cluster, just like a, a lot of different uh, MMO cluster technologies, uh, is comprised of lots of little individual PCs or server racks um, that are comprising uh, a logical server. Uh, they all work together. They as all work one. together as one. Mm -hmm. So it's a hive. And uh, the idea behind a single server is that you, sorry, a single server entity is that you have um, you have everybody concurrent in the same database. They're all exchanging the same information. If I'm chatting to you, everybody else can see it if that's the way you've wired up the chat. So uh, it's not the way you silo um, larger numbers of people in smaller groups. So for instance, World of Warcraft, a very, very popular game, um, has a huge number of subscribers, but they're not all sitting in one server cluster. They're sitting, sitting in little islands. So mm -hmm. you, know, you might have um, 50 or 200 different uh, replicated servers of five or 6,000 people. Okay. So what <clears throat> these are, I, I would say, some of the advantages of using you know Big World as the engine. Um, why would a game development company want to use Big World? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> games are <laughs> games are complex and difficult things to get right, and uh, time, money, and and talent are basically the three ingredients that go into making a a, a, a well executed game project. A, a good middleware system. Um, and what we try to pitch is that that middleware can save you time, money, um, and, and help you with the talent that you're hiring. Um, when you buy or implement a, a good game engine, it should save you a lot of the kind of meat and potatoes with the basic stuff. You shouldn't have to... It's the foundation it's for the, the foundation the, the whole thing. So instead of building technology, putting a mouse pointer on the screen, you're actually going straight to, what am I doing with my game? You don't have to worry about the, or as much about the, the guts of how things work. Is it going to work? Will um, will this technology scale? Will it actually accommodate hundreds of thousands or millions of users? 
those sort of fundamental questions are not answered at release, hopefully, yeah. because you test it, <laughs> but they're answered, they're answered, you know, as you're acquiring the product, because you're able to test it and use it in house, and you've seen other development projects go forward with similar sort of large numbers. So, um, if you were to start a game company tomorrow, uh, and you don't have server backend technology, for instance, like Big World, uh, you would have to build it yourself. Right. Um, and server, good network server engineers who can write scalable stuff um, are not super common. It's just they're, they're not as common as other types of engineers. And like, you know, engineers are very common, you know, or 3D client guys. A lot of people like you know working in 3D. Um, really scalable network stuff that's integrated with a client, integrated with a tool chain, is you know a, a complex kind of thing to implement. And that's what we've managed to do over, as I said, a period of 10 years. It's uh, it's basically all we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, focus on that one problem, which is getting stuff online. So, um, give me uh, kind of a scale to work off of here. On so I want to start a big game. Yep. Now let's just say I'm an indie developer. Yep. And um, uh, let's use well, I don't I don't use any particular game mm -hmm. as an example, but let's just say I make a game and I'm and I, you've got an indie version right. of, of of your engine. Yes. Now, what happens if I hit it big? Does that start scaling up? Well, we have a conversion built in um, to the pricing structure we provide. So the, the indie version at the moment, the sort of entry-level indie version uh, with scripting is like a $300 package a year. Oh, I can, I can afford that. Right, right. So that's the idea is that, uh, you know, at that kind of price point, you can afford to kind of investigate it, mm -hmm. pull around, start implementing, build something out. The next sort of bracket above that is what we call indie source, which is not yet, but it's, it's, it's very nearly ready. And that indie source version is um, comes with the 3D client source and some other uh, bits and bobs. And that allows you to, to do things like modify some of the core rendering components as opposed to just adjusting the properties of them, which is what you can do with the, with the basic version. Um, the idea is if you get the indie version, either of the indie versions, you can either prototype and then pitch to a publisher or pitch to an investor, or, you know, Minecraft style, start small with a small idea and then just, you know, iterate it, iterate it, iterate and grow it out to the point where suddenly you turn around and you've got 12 million very interested people in what you're doing, and then you can come to us and talk about licensing. So we have a, a much higher um, uh, licensing back for Indies, about 15%, but uh, a much smaller single digit royalty percent for, uh, for shipping commercial pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that sounds, that sounds uh, like a good path for somebody who's wanting to uh, kind of dive into this and check it out. I'm not sure how they're going to get there, you know. Well, we, we spent a lot of time consulting with, uh, with Indies, prospective Indies, uh, people and small companies and, and groups who want to, yeah, want to use a professional tool they know will scale. Um, I guess the one tragic point of failure is that a lot of people want to create that, that enormous, vast title, right? The, mm -hmm. the huge MMO. We're an online game engine, we specialize in MMOs, but we do other uh, types of online games, Dota games, um, PvP, combat games, and so on. So um, a common mistake that a lot of indies make is, is they try to implement you know, the games that they first got introduced to as MMOs, like Dark Age of Camelot or World of Warcraft. These are epic, large teams. There's a reason that, that World of Warcraft took you know, five years and right. 50 million plus dollars to implement um, because they are huge, uh, huge endeavors, uh, huge, huge investments, collaborative right. investments in endeavors. And to to try and compete with that at that scale with a handful of guys spread across the world, I think is um, is ambitious. And what you have to do is 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 either ch uh, choose a, a vertical slice, a smaller slice of that that great vision, and and you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's the old adage, it's, you know, smaller but better. Or, or, well, you know, absolutely, yeah. you know, in entrepreneurial stuff, you choose a niche, mm. sometimes a micro niche. Yeah. And you do that well. Like, look yeah. at World of Tanks. I mean, who thought people were that tank crazy? Well, you know, World of Tanks is, is like Team Fortress, but every, everybody's character is a tank. Yeah, awesome. and, and it's not like there are that many other massively multiplayer tank games for them to compete against. I mean, they're competing against other forms of massive multiplayer games, mm -hmm. but it's not like there's a heavily saturated yeah. tank genre that they're mm -hmm. going up against. Yeah. yeah, I felt at first that they had something missing because they were only tanks, mm. but after I got playing it, it was a lot of fun, and I'm like, I'm not sure the rest is needed. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so where do you see, uh, what's what's coming in the future? What's exciting that you can tell us about or that you can't tell us about it but you want to share in Oh, there's so many things. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, well, the thing about engines, and as you can see from E3 or GDC every year, is that uh, it's basically an arms race, right? There's, there's a couple of heavy hitters out there um, who are basically clawing their way ever forward on, on, on better looking pixels. I look around at, at uh, technologies like uh, Crytek or, or Epic's Unreal, and these are, you know, these are engines that command the industry. And so there's this never ending arms race for who could get the highest looking special effect or the most bones or the greatest number of deformations or, you know, uh, deferred rendering, you know, better shadows, all this stuff. So there's. There's a range of uh, technologies we're implementing. Uh, on the server side, we're always making uh, more and more platforms available. So we'll look at iOS very shortly. Um, we've already got a whole bunch of sort of social media, you know, uh, Twitter and, and, and other kind of feeds that you can move in and out of games. So you could, you could have a, a game that's very, very socially connected, um, both in and out, so your chats can move in and out. With um, conceivably files in and out, or audio, or, or uh, you know, any any form of information in and out. Um, on the server, uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on. But on the client as well, we've got uh, better shadowing systems. We're always, um, uh, you know, putting more and more uh, high-end DirectX features in. Uh, we're not going to move away from PC anytime soon. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's mostly about improving visual quality. Uh, raising the bar uh, for developers here in the U.S. and in Europe. Yeah, um, one of the things about MMOs, in order to have a successful MMO, you've got to you've got to be able to reach a wide range of hardware, right? Um, in order to get a large number of people playing your game to, to keep the whole thing moving along. And so you one, help with the client end as well. Oh yeah, yeah, we have a three D client. So the stuff you're seeing on World of Tanks is a is a three D client of the game. Okay. Uh, we also have the tool chain, the visual tool chain, is like. Uh, world editor. Um, we have got a pathfinding solution. There's a there's a bunch of stuff that we do um, with partner technologies like Scaleform, uh, Speedtree, and so on, and Umbra, to um, yeah, to to create more realistic environments and, and better optimized development experiences. Yeah. So if um, if I'm someone who's considering looking at big world, yes, where do I go to find out more info? Well, the uh, root of all evil is big world tech. So it's B I G W O R L D T E C H, bigworldtech.com. Uh, or you can go to bigworldindie.com, or one word, uh, if you want to check out the indie stuff. Cool, cool. Well, Gavin, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate you learning more about Big World. Great, good talking to you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Take care, everybody.